And what's quite unique about the Solar for School CBS is that it's actually, its members are the schools themselves. So it's run mainly for the schools, uh, of course, supported by our bondholders, um, which we're very grateful to. Uh, but any surpluses that accumulate over time will go back to the schools. Why are we only doing schools? Why don't we do hospitals or other public buildings? And the reason is that whilst the CO2 savings from putting solar panels on any one of those buildings is significant and would be helpful, the major difference by putting solar panels on a school is that it enables you to then inspire and educate the students about energy and decarbonization. And having spent years trying to persuade my generation to put solar panels on their buildings or switch to an electric vehicle or fly a little bit less um, with very little success, but noticing how incredibly powerful children are at persuading their parents to change their behavior. That's the key. And our view is that for every school that we achieve, yes, that school might save 10, 15, 20 tons of CO2 a year from the solar panels themselves. But the education that we deliver to those schools will enable those students to persuade their parents and the local community to change behaviors that will lead to significantly higher, we think between 10 and 100 times greater reduction in CO2. So the key point about electricity is that it's very intangible. We use vast amounts of it. We don't really value it. And we certainly don't understand it. So that's the first lesson that we start with with students in these schools. Um, and we've developed a whole lot of tools to do that. Um, we were very fortunate to get a grant from the UK government uh, two years ago and again last year to develop a mobile app that enables students to go on learning journeys around energy and decarbonization and also even start putting solar panels on their roof virtually and then produce a sort of proposal that they can send to their schools. Um, and we've recently, the latest grant, it's a, a training, so a teacher portal for that. So the teachers can actually see how the students are progressing through it. Uh, something we should have thought about in the first place, but uh, they, the students loved it. The teachers loved it, but they couldn't see whether the students had actually done their homework. So now they can, and that will be launched in the next few weeks. And the more schools that join the CBS, the more um, we can invest in, 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 in such tools. So going back to the why am I doing this? We're producing tools or solar options for tools is producing the tools to enable more schools around the world to go solar. And the CBS is the, the not-for-profit entity in the UK that funds the bulk of those schools. We work with other partners or other funders too, but most of the schools get funded by the CBS because of its very unique uh, nature. It's the fact that the schools are very scared of signing up with some sort of uh, faceless fund and like the idea of joining a society or a club of other schools where they have some say in how it's governed. Yeah. So this is just a quick overview of um, from the AGM yesterday of the number of schools completed as of the end of September, early October. So 110 uh, schools since 2016. Um, it's about 50,000 students who now have access to our educational materials. Um, that's saving about 4,000 tonnes of CO2 so far. And it's in aggregate 9.6 megawatts. Um, now, I don't know how, who's going to do the maths on how many students peddling that was equivalent to, but a lot. Um, and um, so that's where we are at the moment. Um, in terms of where we're going... See, in the last in the in the 12 months to the AGM, our year end is March 31st, 18 schools joined. Um, and since then, we've had more than 20 join. And we have a pipeline. If you look on the right hand side of the screen, you can see all the ones that are running, which are green. All the ones in yellow are the ones waiting to be built. Um, now, some of them are still going through some phases of development. So we're still waiting for planning permission on some of them. Um, uh, or grid connections, but uh, they've been scheduled to be built over the next nine months. To do that, it's about nine megawatts, which without grants would need about eight and a half to nine million pounds of funding. It varies. Our, our, our starting assumption is that the schools have no money. 
um, what we find sometimes is that we say, look here, you could have a medium sized system with a PPA that's significantly less than you're currently paying. And they go, well, that sounds quite attractive, but why haven't you filled our roof up completely? So, well, because we put more solar panels on the roof, more of that will then go back to the grid and therefore the PPA price goes up um, proportionally. But yes, your overall savings would be a little bit better, even though your PPA is a bit higher. But you could, for example, contribute some of the funds to it to bring that PPA down. So the DFE gave every school uh, a small amount of money last year for improvements. So some schools are using that. Uh, thank you for the clarification on PPA. Yes, power purchase agreement, which is a contract the schools enter to buy the electricity back from the solar panels. Um, and so uh, we're also getting better at uh, attracting grants. So I would say, going back to your figures, I'd say... 50% are entirely funded by the CBS. I need to look it up exactly, but you know, from rough memory. And the other 50% have either grant, some grant funding or some contributions from the school. So we, we, um, we've got the capacity to build three systems a week at the moment. So we, we don't have our own installation teams. We contract that out. We have a bunch of installers that we work with for many, many, many years under framework agreements. Um, we're trying to bring on a few more installers on that, which is also you know, an interesting challenge. Working on a school is a very, very specific sort of expertise in terms of how you manage those relationships. Sure. Um, and some installers are better than others. Uh, but there's plenty of installation capacity at the moment. Six months ago, installers were impossible to come by. Now they're all knocking on our door. So we don't have an installation capacity issue. It's currently a funding capacity. I, I think we're in an interesting situation where because of high interest rates, of the Bank of England interest rates, it's it's harder to fund these projects than it's ever been before, just at a time where schools are finally getting around to getting their head around it and more and more of them are doing it. And what's the situation with the CBS? CBS is just one um, funder of schools. I mean, it's probably the largest one, but dedicated to schools. But there are lots of other ones out there uh, and they're all going to be um, struggling to complete these projects just at a time when we need them most. Um, so I'm hoping interest rates will come back down again reasonably quickly um, so that this challenge goes away. Because if we do have to drop these projects, I it's quite awkward because you have to go back to the school and say, look, we can't build your project. And often the students have been involved with developing those projects. So that's uh, very disappointing for them. Um, so I think on the one hand, we do need to balance um, interest that we receive for our investments versus the social good that we're doing. And yes, there are probably higher return investments one could do at the moment. Um, maybe not the stock market. That doesn't seem to be going too far either. Um, but I think the balance of the ability to inspire and educate the next generation to accelerate the pace to 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 being carbon neutral is is, is really key um and we want to get into as many schools as possible and inspire as many students as possible and we can only do that if we can attract enough funds at reasonable rates of interest <laughs>